most U.S. presidents have had dogs, but the black and tan coonhound holds the distinction for being America's first first dog. They really are a true American breed. In fact, our founding father, George Washington, had black and tan coon hounds with names like Taster, Tipsy, Tippler, and Drunkard. They were popular with early settlers because of their abilities to track down varmints. They're good on a cold scent, so when the animal's gone, long gone before, they'll pick up on the scent which has gone cold. Originally trained to tree raccoons, these dogs have been known to hunt down deer, bear, even mountain lions. This true American dog was bred 300 years ago by combining the Talbot with the Bloodhound and the Black and Tan Foxhound, creating a quick dog with an amazing sense of smell. And the key to his success lies not in the nose, but in the ears. Big, floppy, Pluto-ish ears. When they're running, it flaps around and actually helps push the smell into the dog's nose. As puppies, the ears grow before the legs, and not until they're three months old do they fully grow into them. Along with their ears, the coonhound's ancestry created a beautiful coat that gives this breed its namesake. The Virginia black and tan foxhound is instrumental in the breed, gives its color. But the black and tan's most distinctive characteristic might be those juicy jowls. Plenty of skin around their muzzle with these flapping lips. You cannot look at a black and tan coon hound and not fall in love. And that's what happened to Jean and Zach. They fell in love with their black and tan Monday. We just uh, loved the idea of having a hound dog. But one of the things Jean first noticed about Monday was her obsession with mealtime. Stay. She's super food motivated. Then one day, Jean heard about a new craze in the dog world the canine raw food diet, a diet consisting of raw meats and vegetables. <laughs> oh, good girl. She does love the raw food diet. But raw food for dogs is not without controversy. That's what brought Jean back in touch with an old high school friend. Kevin Matthews is a renowned celebrity chef, famous as a cook for the likes of Heidi Klum. Seven years ago, when he adopted his Doberman, Kevin found the quality of commercial dog food disappointing. So he quit his job as a people chef and became one of the world's best doggy chefs. I think in today's day and age, uh, people are leaning more towards what is good for them. And if you're dealing with something that you care about or you love, you're going to try to feed it the best that you possibly can. Though Kevin is a firm believer in the raw food diet, some vets and nutritionists are concerned about its safety. A lot of raw food contains very resistant E. coli and salmonella bacteria that if a human were to come in contact with it, could become quite sick. If the dog eats a raw food diet and then comes and licks you in the face, you're prone to catching these things. And I make sure that if I do use chicken, it's organic and I clean it thoroughly, as I would any other meat that I would cook for any human. Despite these reservations, Kevin has a faithful following. He tailors his food for each individual dog and charges about $12 per meal. This is actually one of my most popular dishes, and it's got a bison in it, which is a very dense protein. I call it a bison burger with pomegranate because I use actual pomegranate seeds. Dogs love it. There's butternut squash, there's kale here, there's pumpkin meat. He says it's so good, he eats it himself. Mm. Every month in his kitchen, Kevin whips up savory delicacies for about 20 very lucky family pooches. Hi, Kevin. Hey, Jean, how are you? Good, how are you? Great, I brought some goodies for these guys. Wonderful. Well, they're waiting for Obviously you. Obviously waiting. <laughs> wow, that looks delicious. It is, and I tried it, and I think he'll definitely enjoy this. And it's so cool that you actually try your meals yourself. Because of the cost, Jean keeps her orders with Kevin to just once a month. For us, it's a luxury. If I could do it every day, I would. And she licks the bowl. The only negative is that it brings out another classic coonhound trait. Every morning at 6 a.m., she would howl for, to be fed. She's not a quiet dog. Their singing may be music to some ears, but they make for noisy neighbors, so they're not good apartment dogs. He's much better when he's on the trail when he's got a job to do. Although not hard to groom, shedding is known to be a problem for owners of black and tans. A pretty healthy breed, they can have problems with their eyes and they're prone to hip and elbow dysplasia.
And when it comes to training, you'll need a lot of patience because they're easily distracted by new and exciting scents. And they make a great family pet. So in general, the black and tan coonhound is a noisy dog that prefers the outdoors. It's generally healthy, has few grooming needs. They are agreeable dogs but can be difficult to train. And they're good for active families. Come on, Ray. Back with more Dogs 101 in a moment. Why is this pooch a big hit way out in Africa?